After dinner, Vandiyathevan met the head of the lighthouse personally and told him that he had to go to Sri Lanka urgently. A great man named Tyagavidanga Karayar expressed his grief. There used to be many big boats and small boats on this coast. They have all gone to Sitakare now. They have gone to help our army in Ceylon. I have two boats of my own. In one of them my son has gone with two men who came yesterday. I don't know when he will come back. What shall we do, said. Who are those people? Did their Kumari say they were a type of people? Yes, I don't like them either. I don't know who they are, I don't know what they're going for. They had the palm leaves of Palyavatarayar. I wouldn't have asked my son to go anyway. But my daughter-in-law is very money-loving. She insisted on the man going when they said they were going to pay a lot of money. What's this, sir, funny? Is that what your son wants to hear from a little girl with no experience of the world at home? Vandiyathevan said. Then with some hesitation, excuse me, it's a family matter. He said. Father. There is nothing wrong with your asking. There is a curse on my family. My son. He hesitated. Vandiyathevan then remembered what Santhanamuthan had said about this family. Can't their son talk? He said. Yes, how did you know? Said the elder. Vandiyadeva told him about Santhanamuthan and his mother and his stay at their house. Aha! Uh -huh. Is that you? The news of you has already reached here. Are they looking for you all over the country? Maybe, I don't know about that. Now I see why you want to go to Sri Lanka in such a hurry. Elder. You are not right. I am not going to Ceylon just to save my life. I am taking a very important leave to someone there. You can see it if you want. No need. It's enough for me to have the younger brat write about you. But I can't do the favor you ask at the moment. You said there was another boat. There's a boat. There's no one to push it. I'll give it to you and your friend if you want to push it. Both of us don't know how to sail a boat. I'm a little afraid of water. Especially the sea. Even if you know how to sail a boat, inexperienced people cannot sail a boat in the sea. If you go too far in the sea, the shore will disappear. Then you will have to wander without knowing the direction. I'm not going to take the one who came with me. I'll have to leave him here to gather herbs. You'll have to find a way to help. There is a way. It's easy. Try it. If luck is on your side. Vandiyathevan said, what should I do? If you tell me, great one, I will do it. There is no one else in this area who knows how to push a boat as skillfully as Bungazali. She has been to Sri Lanka many times. I tell her, you two will listen. Call me now, we'll ask and see. No, she's so stubborn. If you ask her right away and say no, then you won't be able to change her mind. I'll tell her tomorrow in good time. Look and ask yourself. After saying the sacrifice, he went towards the lighthouse. Vandiyadeva lay down in his house yard. The doctor's son who came with him had already fallen asleep. The fatigue of the long journey to Vandiyathevan brought sleep round the eyes, he soon fell asleep. Suddenly I fell asleep. I heard the sound of the door opening. Vandiyathevan opened his tired closed eyes with difficulty. A figure was seen leaving the house. He looked more carefully. He saw that it was the figure of a woman. The light of the lighthouse fell on the figure. Cow. She is a flower girl. No doubt. Did she tell us something? Follow me in the middle. I'll show you my lovers. She said. We thought it was some kind of sports talk then. Is she really getting up in the middle of the night? Where is she going? Will you tell us if you are going to see your lover or lovers? Do you say if the sequel comes, I'll show you? There must be some mysterious substance to it. Or maybe, anyway, then why not go ahead and see it? I have to talk to her politely tomorrow and convince her to bring the boat to Sri Lanka. It might help to follow her now. 
something may be in danger for her. If we save her from that, we will be able to comply with what we ask tomorrow, won't it? Van Diathevan got up without making a sound. He kept on following the path of Pungujali. He remembered well the experience of falling into the mud pit in the evening. He didn't want that to happen again. Therefore, the flower should not be left out of his sight. A short distance from the lighthouse was cut off. Therefore, the image of Pungujali was also known. There is no difficulty in going the way she went. He walked quickly thinking that he should go near her and hold her. But it was not possible. As Yvonne walked faster, her pace also increased. She didn't seem to notice that Yvonne kept coming. Crossing the open field came the forested upland. Pungazalai went around the mound without climbing directly on it. The hill and the forest came to an end. She bent the end and carried it. Van the van also hurried and when the end was turned, he saw her going at a little distance. Good luck. He dared that. But in the next moment she suddenly disappeared. How could she suddenly disappear? What magic, magic is this? Could there have been a hole? Running and walking, he came to the place where Pungazalai seemed to have disappeared, stood there and looked around. She couldn't have gone on three pages. If he had gone, he could not have disappeared from his sight. He sat there carefully in the morning and made sure that there was no mud. Therefore, he must have climbed the hill and gone into the forest. A closer look revealed that there was a single track path leading up to the overgrown hill. Vandiyadeva climbed into it. It ticked while climbing. Not even the dim light of the lighthouse came there. The evening crescent had already sunk into the sea and disappeared. In the light of the twinkling stars the path was not far off. Shrubs and short trees took on monstrous forms. Their shadows turned into black ghosts. As the leaves of the plants swayed, so did the shadows. Every movement shook Vandiyadeva's chest. Who saw where and what danger awaited in that black darkness and shadow? Venomous beasts and deadly beasts may lurk. Danger may come from above, can also come from sides, may come later. Damn! What is this, are we caught here? Didn't even bring work in hand? What was that rustling noise? What is that black figure visible on the tree? In the darkness of the bush two small points of light flashed, what could they be? Vandiyadeva's legs trembled without realizing it. Okay. Okay. What work do we have here? Why did we come here? What ignorance? It is necessary to go down immediately. Just as he hesitated to get down, he heard a voice. A heart-rending voice, a woman's voice. A whistling sound. Vandiyathevan gave up the idea of going down from Ammit. He climbed up towards the place where the voice came from. Soon the top of the hill came into view. There she stood. It's a piper. Sung by her. She sang while looking at the stars in the sky. It seems that she sang thinking of the stars as the audience listening to her song. One of the stars is Dumakatu. The sound of the ray emanating from it spread far and wide like a fan. The shadowy form of the woman on the top of the hill, her voice and song, and the cloud in the sky together made Vandiyadeva faint. His legs carried him to the top. He stood directly in front of the piper. Behind her, far away, appeared the red light of a lighthouse. Around it lay the vast sea. The silver wave line stretched and curved as if demarcating the sea. Have you come? I saw that you slept like cum bakerna in the field. I woke up hearing the sound of the door opening. You came walking to let me go. You didn't look back. Mom. How hard was it to run after you? Why did you keep coming? Good question. You asked me to come? Did you forget? Why did I ask you to come? Do you remember? What without memory? You said you'd show your lovers. Where are your lovers? Show me, we'll see. Look behind you there. Said Punghuali.